You're pumped for like you're stoked. This oh, is man. this is well. That's watching it with an audience is filmmaker's favorite part. I've, I've told this story in other interviews, but when we did for the union for my very first screening, we did Vancouver and it was a sold out theater, and you start seeing people laughing and reacting to your work. I remember sitting, thinking to myself, I was like, I will never be able to do anything else because nothing is that inspiring or moving. Like, when you just get a paycheck for your job, that's not the same as when you see it affecting audiences like this. So, of course, I was stuck. I was really excited for today, and uh, I, I think everybody liked the film, so I'm, uh, I'm, I'm very excited, definitely. It was uh, really intense in terms of the amount of information, almost overload. How much footage did you end up shooting, and how much ended up getting cut? Oh, we well, we have half an hour of DVD extras coming out in January with like Lester's personal story and Sensi Seeds. I think we had uh, over a hundred hours of cell shot footage ourselves, and then archival. We went through hours and hours and hours of archival footage, and like you say, and then uh, I mean, fact checking everything and going over. Like my director can't wait till he's doing one that's not like a big policy driven doc like let's just do one on something interesting so we don't have to fact check everything five million times but yeah I, I think it was around like we went over like 200 hours of archival and 100 hours we self shot ourselves or 120 live from Vegas Central it's the Murder Water Center it is now 420 in Vancouver tonight special guest Adam Scorby from the Culture Hive you guys enjoyed the movie? I it was I, I, yeah. 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 <laughs> the culture of marijuana, we're trying to do is just uh, announce the way it's going to release with Tug, right? Oh, okay. If you aren't familiar with Tug, as we talked about in the theater, if you want to bring Tug to your local venue, say you want to screen it here at Vapor Lounge, Tug can arrange it for you, or if you're going to an outside theater, you just log on like Facebook. The Tug's program that you have. I love the Tug program. Uh, Tug, unfortunately, is only available in the United States right now, but they are working like they can bring it not to theaters in Canada and stuff, but they can bring it to auditoriums and colleges. But uh, the way Tug works is that if you want to bring it to your local theater, you live in Michigan, you log on to Tug, it's free just like Facebook, you put in your zip code, it'll give you theater choices that they work with. You pick your top choice, your two backups. Tug will then contact the theater, they do all the heavy lifting, they book the date, you pick a date with them, they do all that for you, don't charge you, and then they'll come back to you and say, okay, if you want it in this theater, you need to pre-sell 100 tickets, or if you want to do this theater, you need to pre-sell 60 tickets. So if you don't hit the threshold, doesn't matter, you're not charged. So people don't have to worry like, oh, what if I only get 20 tickets, doesn't matter. Nothing happens and the event just doesn't happen. If you do hit the 60 tickets or the 100 ticket threshold, then you as the host gets 5% of the ticket sales and you can add a donation thing and you can put it in your own name. Like Vapor Lounge, if it was in, well, essentially we can do it because it's not a theater. So Vapor Lounge could say Vapor Lounge presents the Toronto premiere of the Culture High and then you have a, you know, you create the event yourself. So what I like about it is that all these different drug reform policy plate or people that have you know are in u.s uh, medical where they don't have coverage can raise awareness for a young child and you can add a fundraiser function too so not only do you get five percent of the ticket sales but you can add a fundraiser button where everyone can donate an extra dollar or two or five dollars a ticket for the local charity or for fundraiser that you're trying to raise money for so that way it's not just about me the filmmaker you can educate audiences and get awareness out there. You can make money for your local charity. And you get to watch the film in the best venue possible, in a theater or a venue with the community of your peers and people you want to see it. It is, I think it's where, where film is going in the future, where we no longer have to be dictated by studios and big media. Audience can now say, no, this film is important to me. I do want to see it in an audience with my peers, so I'm going to bring it here myself. So we've got Boston, San Antonio, Houston, it's great, but like, literally people are just saying, I want to bring it to my community. So they bring it. Whether it's you and 20 of your stoner buddies in some small town, you can bring this movie to the city. You can do colleges and stuff too, right? And the college rates are very cheap. I think it's like 250 bucks if you're not charging admission. So a college can pay that and they can fill an auditorium of 600 people, right? As long as they pay for the educational rights, which 250 bucks, it's nothing, right? So Tug does all those, de and they do all the heavy lifting for you. You contact them, one of the representatives will take care of it. He acts like an agent for you. He'll they do all the hard work for you. You just need to convince your group of friends on Facebook and Twitter, on your social media, your group, to just come out and see the movie. The T-U-G-G dot com. And it's on your website. You just yeah. go right on the website, I want to see the movie in the theater, and you click there, and 
and you get rewarded with 5% of the ticket sales for doing it. Holy fuck, this community is motivated and passionate and willing to prove their passion with their hard-earned dollar. Now they can do that with Tuck, but they get rewarded. They get paid to do it. We give you 5% of the ticket. So I want to blow it out of the water with them again, not for a financial thing, but nothing would be better than if we set such a precedent if they did a tug screen for every normal chapter, every student's first sense for drug policy, they did it for every single one, and all of a sudden now you are in the front of Variety and Hollywood Reporter as this documentary that everybody blew off, that didn't even get selected into TIFF's official selection, the audience itself, pulled in and did 500 screenings across North America. And that's right. doable, it's so easy. Like, the, the touch does all the work for you guys, so if you want to see the movie in your hometown, if you want to see it in Kitchener, Hamilton, St. Catherine, P.I., Halifax, in the states, you want to see it in Nebraska, you want to see it in Texas, you want to see it in the states that have, like, the draconian laws, bring it there, there is no cost to you Tug does the heavy lifting, and you get 5% of the ticket sales. Go to Tug. That's the easiest thing for you. Log on and do I'm not even trying to do a sales pitch. The reason I was so excited when Phase 4 got this is I was like, it is perfect for our audience. I don't see why every normal chapter in the world doesn't host one and why every student's for a sensible drug policy. They can raise money for their local charity and, or for their organization, which is a non-profit, and they can bring awareness and have a fun, entertaining film to watch. You see much more emotional. Maybe because it was larger than life. I, well, they, and I try to sell that to them. That that's why I'm encouraging the talk. It's like not to say that you hit the nail on the head. Watching it with an audience, part of what it is is when you see a person next to you reacting, right? And they're getting emotional and they're getting teary eyed, or, you know, everybody's laughing at one of the jokes in it. You go along for the ride with everybody. Last question for the Dope Chef is what's the role of celebrity Wiz, Snoop, Joe Rogan? What's the role of celebrity in documentaries, so to speak? Well, there's several ones. One, Joe is an anomaly because he understands the situation probably better than nine out of ten activists. He's incredibly intelligent, does his research like better than most people. But obviously, like anything, any charity, anything, everybody, you know, usually gets a voice of a celebrity so that it will go more mainstream, so more people see it, so more voices go to do it. There's a ton of people that will go to see this movie not even knowing it's an informational doc, strictly because Snoop Dogg or Wiz Khalifa's on the cover, right? Because they're a fan. They're like, oh, I'm gonna see, they'll probably think it's a feature film. And then they'll be like, oh, I didn't know it was an informational doc. Right? But then you also have, at the end of the day, when we're making an informational doc, in order to retain, as you said yourself, there's so much information, in order to retain it, if we don't make it entertaining, you won't. If it's just like a visual college report where it's just information, 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 even the most active person who wants to learn is going to get bored. So you still need to make it, it is still a movie, right? So you need to have them in there for those comedic breaks where they can connect to you on, as we saw in there, like Snoop Dogg was really funny, Joe Rogan's really funny, right? Rufus Hound, the comedian's really funny. But also the points they're making are very, very valid points in an entertaining way, which allows you to retain the information that much better. It's not just a funny movie, and I'm going to end on this for the dope chef. I cried. What you guys think of the Culture High movie? Oh my god, it was absolutely fabulous. It was so moving. There may have been a few tears in my eyes. <laughs> I said that too. I said there was tears. Yeah, it was, it was really well done. Definitely, definitely a great movie. Oh, hey ladies. I touched on the political side of like how things end up that way. And I thought this was really good. Did you laugh and cry? Yeah, I laugh and I cry. Um, I thought it was really great. I thought it touched on a lot more areas that a lot of documentaries don't. Went into a lot more of the medical side and the positives and how it can really help people. No, it informed people and educated people on an intelligent level that really, really, really needs to be seen by you. And, and the opening sequence, I cried a little too. With the, did you, did you enjoy the movie? I really enjoyed the movie, except the beginning. Spoiler! Spoiler! What else do you want to give away? I cried. I cried a couple times, um, but I also was very educated about a lot of things like where the money goes and the politics behind things, and I like seeing that in layman's terms. So it's good watching. Spoiler alert! Put that one right. <laughs> Spoiler alert! <laughs> I cried. Read it. That's right. A lot of people did. Okay. Thanks, Dope Chef. Ah. <laughs> uh.
can't hear any of this, but she cried four times during the movie. I cried a couple She times. was thanking him. Uh, right. Double check. Did we have it? I think we got it. We got, yeah, we got three women saying. Do you have that? Seriously? I think double check. We got three clips. Okay, we might even be able to change some of that in footage because we could use that. We'll, we'll do cross promotion there. I think I, I said I cried, so I think Dope Check's got a bunch of people that said they cried. Awesome. Yeah, he's shaking his head, yeah? Thanks again, Alex. Hey, no, my pleasure, guys. Seriously, I mean, thank you. And thank you guys for always promoting my movie and coming to support. I, it's awesome. I, I wouldn't have a career without the audience that support me, so thank you. All right. Thank you. All right. All right. It covers the whole range of emotions, and I think that's what a great documentary is about. And you've done a wonderful job yet again, and this is the beginning. First time in the theater with an audience, this was the world premiere for that, which was amazing. It's my favorite part. If I was always with a large audience, I could watch it a thousand times, because I get to go on the journey with a new audience every time. So for me, as long as I'm healthy and can continue to do that with all my movies, I'm a happy guy. Awesome, I'm Matt Myrna with my buddy, The Dope Chef, and we're here with Adam Scrogi talking about his latest movie, The Culture High, and of course we just explained how you guys can get it into your hometown, so make it happen.